do another live session with the special announcement. We call it the biggest launch event of the year. So getting pumped for this. Yeah, thanks, Rick. So I'm Dan, I'm the uh, global head of uh, marketing and sales for Polaris. And we just met, or, or were reintroduced to Lewis, the CEO of, of Polaris Wearables. And we are beyond excited to bring you uh, really our, like Lewis said, our biggest launch event ever. Uh, and today's launch event is, is gonna feature uh, both some big software updates as well as uh, a significant new launch. Um, we are super excited to show you what we've got, but first we want to give you a look at what we've done and accomplished in the last 12 months. So we've had five major software releases in the last year, and we've brought tons of new features to you guys. Um, most recently we had the strength training mode and the structured workout programs. We had the first of its kind track run mode, winter sports activities, uh, Beidou GPS uh, satellite supports, and uh, nutrition alerts, and so many other features. And we've also had several new hardware releases. Most recently, we had the limited edition Vertex Mojito, which sold out in like a week and a half. We also have the new color Vertex Space Traveler. About nine months ago, we had the Nylon, or excuse me, the Apex Pro and the Coros Pod. And then most recently, we, we introduced the nylon watch bands. We are now distributed in over 50 countries around the globe. In fact, we are on all six uh, inhabited continents. So sorry to Antarctica, you can't yet get us, but maybe soon. And we have tons of new retailers around the globe as well. In the US here, we've got uh, REI, Running Warehouse, Fleet Feet, and so many more great partners. We also have iRun and Alltrix, along with many others in France and Decathlon Sports throughout Asia. But there are also so many other great retailers where you can find Coros now. We've also been fortunate enough to win several great awards. Runner's World gave the Apex the gear of the year last year and Believe in the Run named the Apex Pro the best GPS watch. But none of this could happen without you, our users. We treat you, or hopefully you feel like we treat you like family. We truly believe this is a community. And thankfully, our community is growing. It's actually over three and a half times bigger than it was just a year ago. So now let's take a quick look at what you guys have all accomplished over the last year. I don't know about you, but that is a lot of miles and a lot of kilometers run, cycled, and, and swam. So congrats to all of you for doing your part in uh, leading us around the globe several hundred times. But enough about the last year. Let's move on to what you guys are really here for, which is today's uh, launch of new software and new hardware. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to CEO Louis Wu. All right, thanks, Dan. You know, I was I was happy myself contributed a, a little bit over a thousand miles to the running distance last year. So let's keep that pace. I'm sure I will run even longer you know, for this year. Um, yeah. So as Dan mentioned, it's so exciting, uh, you know, to bring you the new software and hardware. And then I know everybody is probably eager for both. So, but let's start from the software announcement. 
Um, I like to introduce or one of the biggest topics or one of the first topics today is actually about power, about the running power. And then for those of you, you may know, we actually, we've had a running power solution since the pod launch. And then users was able to use a pod clip to the back of the shorts or pants and then compare this with the watch and to get the running power data. And today we are going to show you the two new solutions of the power from Carlos Watch. The first solution is called is Carlos Watch with Stripe com combined together. And then the second solution is the Cor uh, Carlos Watch only. So before we jump into more details about those two features, I think there's nobody else then the Stride team is able to explain why you should run in power, you know, better than anybody else in this world. So the Stripe is the true expert and the true innovative innovator in the running power um, area. And then I guess the Stride measurement is actually considered as the gold standard of running power. So I would like to bring Evan here. You know, Evan is the head of coaching and educational content at Stride, and uh, he's also an incredible athlete and coach. So let's get him here. I'll pass it to Evan, and then he will bring us some good in educational information about running power. Hey, Evan. Hey, Lewis. How's it going? Good. How are you? I am great. Uh, first, I want to say thanks, Lewis, Dan, and uh, the whole Chorus team for having us on today. We're so pumped and so excited, and I'm really excited to talk uh, more about power. It seems like I, I can't shut up about it. So I'm really excited to uh, have a platform where I can talk to some more people about it. Yep. There we go. I'll let you talk to us. Awesome. So uh, yeah, just uh, starting off again, my name is Evan. I uh, work at Stride, been here a little bit over two years. We're a Boulder, Colorado based company. Um, I've used Stride over the past couple of years to uh, train for different races. Uh, my last race was the US Olympic Marathon Trials. Um, and I'm really, really excited to talk about how not only I use power and how I explain to use power in training, but how people can understand what seems like maybe a scary or foreign subject, but is uh, obviously coming to the masses. Uh, so why run with power? First, it's comprehensive. It comprehensively considers your efforts. It's instant. So power responds instantly to changes in efforts and power is easy when you have your power number on your watch, you take a simple glance down at your wrist, you can check in real time instantly the change in your effort, no matter what the terrain is, what your speed is, or the climate around you. So why run with power? It is a easy, instant, and comprehensive measure of your intensity in real time. And with talking about power, there's a couple of things that people might have heard if they've researched stride before, if they've uh, researched running power before, they might have uh, heard it as a kind of hot new topic, uh, people throwing out the term a little bit more. When I talk about training with power, there's one kind of key thing to remember. And if it's anybody watching now or watching a replay of this after the fact, uh, the thing you should be most aware of is the concept of critical power. Critical power is your performance baseline, and it makes actually training with power possible. To define it in sort of a scientific term, it's the threshold at which the dominant type of fatigue your body is experiencing changes. So this means it's personal based on the individual. Um, and critical power, again, is that threshold. That's the one thing that you should remember on how to incorporate power into your training is knowing what critical power is. Uh, we can see from the little graphic here um, plugged in. This is an example of the Stride app talking about um, your critical power showing your trend over time, but then also um, notifying you based on our auto calculated critical power system, which notifies you of changes in your fitness in real time based on the training you're doing. So how to train with power. There are a couple um, kind of key points that you should know. One, establishing power zones. So like we talked about critical power, people that might've used uh, heart rate training or pace-based training in the past should be familiar with the concept of zones, which are just percentage areas of a certain uh, number. Again, critical power as a established number, you can take certain percentages of that and use that to guide your training based on zones. You can monitor improvements. So monitor your fitness improvements using 
critical power and the changes in critical power over time and balancing training load. So you can balance intensity and load to ensure you have the proper recovery. Uh, based on that threshold, you can have certain amounts of stress that you can identify based on each of your running activities. So balancing training load is a huge thing based on knowing your threshold or your critical power. So how do you race with power? It, it seems like a good thing to train with. And if you train along the whole way, you should be able to use it on race day to have a accomplishable, achievable, and a goal that you know you can do. Instead of guessing coming up on race day, you know, everybody has those jitters on the starting line, um, having their GPS watch connect, getting ready for that last countdown that last minute having the sounds blast out from the speakers well you should be confident in all of your training over the past training block that you have a race target you know you can start out at and you know you can finish at so establishing a power target is actually pretty easy you can use your critical power to establish a race power target you can follow that power target from the start to the finish again no guessing no worrying of if you're starting out too hard starting out too easy you can monitor your power on your watch to stick to that target and you can perfectly pace any race course you can race any course at your best effort with your first attempt with power by simply using power during training and translating that effort to race day and how to use power in the middle of the run. It's, it's great to know about planning. It's great to know about reflection, but the most important thing and the most time you're gonna spend using power is looking at power in real time. So um, there are a couple of solutions for this uh, and based on some different cases. So let's say you're running in effort and you, you have some hills. Well, you have a real time power for quick adjustments for workouts like hills. Lap power is a great solution for some sort of like standard mini steady state almost. So maybe if you're running a minute to 10 minute repeats, you kind of want to look at that lap power if it's like an interval or fartlek run. And then average power is great for those long runs where you have a specific goal in mind. Things like steady state runs as well as races, making sure you stick to that average power target. And then how do you analyze a run with power? You have a uh, Pretty, pretty cut and dry comparisons. You can compare similar runs and races against each other to see how your fitness is progressing. And you have uh, compliance to see how well you stuck to that goal. So you set a goal based on that critical power, based on your zone, based on your race effort. You can see very, very easily how well you stuck with that actual goal. And talking about the chorus and stride integration, uh, again, if it's one thing that you take from this, uh, from the power side, it's to understand your critical power and understand how that works in your actual day-to-day -day training and racing. With Coros and Stride, your critical power from Stride syncs to your Coros watch, so you can be notified of changes of your fitness over time, and you can make sure that you're training at the same relative intensity as your fitness improves, keeping you improving over time. You have total metric integration, so Stride does more than just power, including things like leg spring stiffness, which shows how efficiently your leg is recycling energy, things like form power, which is the power that's not being used to move forward. You can track things like vertical oscillation, things like ground contact time. Coros collects all of these from the watch, and you can see that after the run. And then activity sync, so activities automatically sync from the Coros platform to Stride Power Center. But as you know, things easily sync from your Coros watch to your phone and your other apps as well. Well, great, that, that looks exciting. So, Absolutely, well, and we are, we, we, we are so excited just about, um, you know, when, when, it, when it comes to using technology, running technology specifically, you want things to be uh, very easy. Just simply pairing, you know, Stride in, in, in your Coros watch, it gives you a Great solution to have native and complete support. Again, like I mentioned, these advanced metrics and having that power on your wrist in real time, being able to view that afterwards. It's a very, very simple process just to uh, pair and have that complete native and complete stride support as well. So um, very, very excited to talk about, about power today, kind of introduce things from the stride side. Uh, thanks, thanks again, uh, Lewis and the whole rest of the Coros team. Yeah, I know stride has been a, a very, very frequent requested feature <laughs> from a users pretty much from day one. Mm -hmm. And one of the reason why it actually took longer than expected to build this in partnership integration is actually because it's a coral side to build 
if we decide to build anything, we want to build the best feature. So that's why it took longer, you know, we, you know, thanks to the Stripe team as well, we've been working together really, really close with each other. And we're able to bring this, the only watch brand to have native and complete Stripe support. So there are some other watches on the market, some maybe a native support and some maybe a complete support, but none of those are like Carl's. We are native and complete. Um, so yeah, I would like to walk through some quick features for our audience today to just, just see the experience on a Carl's watch with Stripe. So first of all, to add your Stripe to Carl's watch, that has never been easier than, than this before. So simply go to your setting, select accessories and pick at ANT plus. I'll make sure you wake up the Stripe, you know, like take it to walk for a short distance or shake it with your hands. And then the watch will ser start searching and uh, it Stripe will be appear on the on the accessory list and then just click to add this. Um, after you add this, we've actually, we actually provide a few settings, which to, to envision the first, like the full Stripe features. If you look at the very left um, watch face, you know, start from the top critical power, users will be able to enter your previous known critical power into your Carlos watch on your first use. Like you can, if it's 250 watt, then enter 250, then you'll be able to see the um, the creative power zones right after on the first use. And also Stride has a calibration factor that you can use. Stride is to be very accurate at the beginning, you know, out of the box. But if you wanted to do this, feel free to follow the instruction from stride.com about how to uh, calibrate it. And then you can enter the data you got to a Carlos watch to get the most accurate distance data. Um, and lastly, that's a distance setting. So if you pair a Stride with a Carlos watch, Stride data overrides pretty much like in the indoor run, it overrides the distance data automatically. And it overrides the instant pace just because Stride is a foot pod, foot pod just be more sensitive and more accurate in terms of instant pace. And then and overrides, uh, it can be for outdoor runs, that's optional for us. Um, it's not, it doesn't matter like who is more accurate, it's because the watch measures your distance travel on from your wrist while Stripe measure the distance you travel on your foot. So whichever you prefer, if you prefer Stripe data, you can set it right here, distance setting, you know, pick Stripe, or you can keep it with, with Carlos watch. Um, and then, you know, click start. And then on the third watch face, you can see here's a little S icon at the bottom, meaning the it's connected to, to two Stripe, so you can start running. Um, and lastly, um, you can see the power zone, the real-time data uh, from the Carlos to watch during your run when you pair with the Stripe. So after workout, we also present the full, full set of Stripe data, as Evan just mentioned, um, including running power, um, ground contact time, uh, vertical oscillation, we call it, oh no, uh, you know, in, in also Stripe ratio, and we have a Stripe height, it's the same as vertical oscillation. Uh, form power, leg spring stiffness as well. Uh, we also record air power. If you look at the first picture, air power is shown as a percentage here. Um, so that's just beyond exciting. It's, uh, you know, I've been using Stride as well for a couple of months and since I got this project kick it off um, and it's been great and it's using, um, and it helps my training. Apparently there's no race schedule for now, but uh, I've been enjoying um, the training with Stripe. And in addition to that, I've also mentioned another solution um, is the power directly from your watch. Um, so that just make the life even easier. Nothing you need to do, or well, maybe you need to update your firmware if you already have a watch. Uh, no accessory needed, just click start and start running. Um, but the one thing you will notice like the power directly from a watch um, doesn't have the power zone as Stride have. Um, so I'll, I'll get a little bit more of a comparison um, to the end of this introduction, just to compare different solutions. Um, but simple enough, any power Coros watch, probably from this week, you will have wrist power. And people ask, often ask like, how accurate is your wrist power? Like there are some companies on the market, they do have a wrist power solution. Like 
everybody knows Stratly is the most accurate. Like how, how accurate, how, how much can I trust this risk power data? Here we go. That's a very nice comparison chart. It's not from us, uh, it's not from our team. It's from one of the reviewers. We send the unit to them and then he start testing. I'm sure you will see quite a lot of review article posted after today. Like I'm sure everybody is trying to, to do the comparison. Um, it's funny enough, you can see there are pretty much four, four devices being used here. Um, the purple is the strike power on the same round. And then the red is Carl's wrist power. The green and black are one from a Garmin, one from Polar. You can see, obviously, the Carl's wrist power is the closest line to a strike power measurement. Um, that's actually a very exciting result. Um, one thing, Strat is better, is definitely Strat is more sensitive. You can see a very little, you know, up and downs in your running. That's because it's more sensitive. And then Carl's power is a little bit more smooth lights. Um, but in general, it goes, gives a good measurement in terms of your power number as well as the power trend during your run. Well, the green line, it, the trend appears to be okay. It's also following, you know, whatever number strides and giving, it just obviously it's higher, higher, it's higher data. Unfortunately, the black line isn't performed the best, especially for the second part of the run, like it's all over the place. So I can't really comment on that. Um, but far, it's exciting. You know, the Carl Swiss power is a very good solution for any runner if you want to try to run with power. And if you like it, you can start from a Carl Swiss power and buy a strat later on. So here's a comparison chart that I have. I'm not going to go through each, uh, every single line, but it, it might be a nice screenshot if you want to take it. Uh, basically, two or uh, four solutions. One is a Carl's watch with strat. Another is a Carl's watch only. And the third one is a Carl's watch with Carl's pod. You know, Carl's pod used to provide power, but ever since now, we, the watch has the power itself, so we don't need the pod to provide uh, power data, but pod still provides a lot of advanced running metrics, um, including foam power is a new power data that we're introducing to the pod. Uh, lastly, is the Carlos app running with Carlos pod, you know, from a data not many people has been using that way, uh, but that's still some good information to do. So, you know, short comparison, if you look at the most accurate, most sensitive running power data, you should go after a Carl's watch with stride. If you look for a simple solution, you use a Carl's watch only will be a nice way to start. Um, and uh, of course, if you use the Carl's watch with Carl's pod, then you have pretty much similar full set of the advanced data that you can get. All right, so jump next slide. Um, we also have this special offer to the existing users again. So you can claim your special pricing at $49.99 from a user login page at carlos.com to get the pod. Uh, the pod will also receive a new firmware update uh, pretty soon. So just because we need to get some updates to align with a new firmware with a watch. Um, so make sure you connect to your Carlos app to update firmware and then you can put it, um, you can connect to the watch directly. So that's all about running power. Uh, I, hope, I hope everybody gets some uh, good information. We will have a quick Q&A session after this uh, software introduction. So, you know, our team will pick a few good number questions if you would like to ask, and then we'll, we'll try to answer this right here. Uh, meanwhile, our team is active in the live chat as well. They are trying to answer questions as soon as much as possible. Um, there are more exciting things right here. So, you know, maybe I shouldn't call it one more thing because there are multiple things coming up. Um, first thing, again, we will be the only watch brand with native support of power as a running intensity metric when you put up your running workout program. So as a screenshot here, you can just select power and then you can select your range um, to set up your power and then follow it. And uh, I know everybody was very exciting uh, with uh, the new workout program uh, feature that we put up a couple of months ago. And now this workout program is now coming into a calendar style, meaning you can set up a plan, whether of 
eight and eight, eight weeks uh, plan, 12 weeks, 16 weeks for your marathon, for your, you know, trail running or for any mountaineering goals, you will be able to set it up and then follow your watch to train. Um, and the training plan and workout program features together, we it's coming together as a platform. We, we, can, we tend to call it Carl's training platform. The key thing for us to build this feature is first, you are you have freedom to create any program that you have, and then you are able to share with all of your friends, either, either it's a, from a coach to a, an athlete level or a friend share to a friend, um, you can just share all the favorite workouts that you have, or including the favorite training plans that you have. And then apparently you can execute it on your watch whenever it's ready. So let's also take a look at a quick experience on the training plan. You know, you will have one new item on your menu showing as training plan. And if you click that, that's a calendar view of whatever plan you have. Uh, look at the, the rings, different colors represent different type of workouts. Um, it's a, either running, cycling, swimming, or strength. Um, then if you select today, here's the today's workout, and you can also scroll down to all those different workouts in different days. And you probably get tired of me talking, so let's watch a quick video explaining this training plan feature. Today we will show you how easy it is to create, edit, and follow a training plan with your Coros watch. First, go to the profile page and select training plans. Tap create plan to start building your own plan. Coros offers two styles to view the workout for each week. Pick a day and tap add workout to add a program. You can then set up a quick workout program. For example, a five mile easy run or tap add an existing workout program to select one of the structured programs from what had previously been created. If you need to make changes to the added workout programs, tap to view program details and edit. Swipe left to duplicate or delete programs. Do the same to duplicate or delete a week. Tap save when you finish creating the training plan. Then set up a start date. Training plans start on Monday. It's recommended to start your plan in the following week if you are not on Monday to avoid missing out on training. After syncing to your watch, go to training plan mode to view details and start training. The watch will also notify you of the training details if you select the associated workout mode. Training plan status will be updated on the next day on the Coros app. Training plans can be easily shared with your friends and coaches or saved to your Coros app. You can save multiple training plans in your app, but only one training plan can be added to the watch at a time. You need to exit the current plan before adding a new one. Now you're ready to tackle your training goals and explore perfection. Very hot. So how do you like it? Um, let's get to the... Um, in addition to, you know, all those features that we're sharing, we are also providing free training plans on carlos.com. Uh, as of today or tomorrow, we'll be able to provide four quick um, programs, including two from Carlos and two from us, um, 
our friend at Astride, that they're nice enough to get to give us the access to their training programs based on power. Um, and uh, we'll add more training plans on carlos.com for free down the road with working with our athletes and coaches. So you will get a, I mean, there's nothing better than having the tools and having the information and knowledge right together. So when we talk about all those nice cool features we're going to launch today, so here's a quick list of what's going to be available. Apparently, this is going to be available to Vertex, uh, to Apex Pro, to the Apex 40, uh, 46 and 42 millimeter, and to something new today that we're going to launch. And now we've tried really hard again on Carl's Pace, although we announced that Pace is not able to take any new features because of the limitation of the storage. We're able to build the wrist running power into Carl's Pace. And unfortunately, there's no room for other features, but at least we've tried. The new Carl's app will be ready um, tomorrow um, for us to download and update. And the watch firmware, depending on which model you're in, it will be starting from tomorrow and in the rolling out mode in a couple of days. But I'm pretty sure everything will be pushed out live within this week. Um, so yeah, let's uh, welcome Dan back um, to see if there's any questions that we need to answer right here. So I'm looking at my panel right now. Um, yeah. Th thanks, Lewis. Um, I'm sure you uh, you need to catch your breath and get a drink of water after all that, but uh, certainly a lot of great stuff on the on the software side. And we see you guys in the chat that are interested to know if there's a new watch coming. Just stick tight. Um, we've got something for you. But quick, we're gonna we're gonna grab a couple of questions and we'll invite uh, Evan from Stride back in here. As um, you know, a few of these are going to be related to power, so we'd love to get his expertise. So let's uh, let's bring Evan back. But Here's, uh, here's one of the questions, and this is from uh, Carolis uh, Massalionis, and I apologize about uh, name pronunciation, but what is the main difference between running with power and running with heart rate? And, and I'll pass that along to, to Evan. Yeah, I, I think that's a fantastic question, and it's something that um, I've definitely answered in the past, and it's something that uh, as power gets a little bit more popular and more nomenclature, that definitely is something to talk about. Um, first, starting off, I, I don't think uh, it's uh, useful to throw away any metric as you add something in new, so things can always work in conjunction. The main difference that I'd say is, again, uh, like I was talking about a little bit earlier, is that power is an instant response to what your body is doing in real time. Heart rate on its face, uh, typically when you see it, is displayed as something like beats per minute and it lags based on your effort in real time. So um, if people are used to training off of heart rate, you might be used to running up a hill, putting in a little burst during a race, waiting for your watch to show you that your heart rate is actually spiked up. Um, some other things going along with heart rate that don't necessarily happen with power is uh, things like cardiac drift. As you go longer and longer in duration, that heart rate tends to climb and keep climbing, and you might have to dial back the effort as that uh, duration goes on. Other things like your status of dehydration, uh, if you've had caffeine, if it's hot, if you're um, you know, not, not well cupped up on your sleep, things like that can impact the actual heart rate number. And so for that consistency over time, you're not working with the same variables day in and day out. So if you get good at training with heart rate and you understand how to um, draw in all those factors, it can be a great, great tool. And I, I definitely think it's a great tool that a lot of people use. With power, you have something that's tuned to you and you can adjust that relative intensity in, in real time. That would be the main difference, I would say. Awesome, thanks, Evan. And uh, another one for you, and this is from uh, Nike, Michael Novak. Um, is is the wrist power measurement dependent on a GPS signal? Obviously, people are are running on treadmills or or other indoor uh, indoor runs on occasion. So, uh, is Stride useful in those circumstances? Yeah. So, I, I mean, I, I think for what what I understand from your guys' side too. So, if it's wrist power only coming from um, Coros, that will require the GPS for Stride. Um, it, it is not required. Uh, it's Stride again sit, sits on your foot. Um, seven gram foot pod, super tiny. Uh, it tracks your motion through 3D space. And so 
uh, it is independent of GPS. So if you run through, um, I know there are a couple of popular races where you go through a tunnel or something like the Chicago Marathon, where late into the race, um, you might have to deal with if you have another, you know, reliance on on giving pace feedback, you might not have that. But with Stride, it's independent of GPS. Um, so for treadmill, for indoor track, outdoor track, running on trails, it is independent of needing a GPS signal to give you that info in real time. Yeah, I think I can add on to here. Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, that's one point I missed about the difference between stride power versus our wrist power. Our wrist power requires a lot on GPS. So you're going to get the best wrist power when you have a GPS signal. If you're running through a tunnel or if you're running indoors, the car's watch alone won't be able to get you the wrist power you would like to have. And in that case, it's recommended to use stride to get the power. And, and one last question from uh, from Julius, uh, and this is more a Coros question: Is the long term commitment from Coros to support Stride? I'm asking, uh, since jumping from Garmin to Coros and completely new platform is something that many people uh, do not take easy. So yes, I mean we are introducing this today, and and this is not meant to be a, a short term solution in any way, shape, or form. We've we've worked. Uh, I shouldn't say we, because I had no part in it, but our developers uh, worked really, really hard to, to offer the first complete and, and native integration with Stride. And the Stride team um, was a dedicated part of that process as well. So this is not something that's going to be a, a flash in the pan. We're, we're going to be uh, looking to support power um, and Stride for, for the foreseeable future as, you know, I envision power is, is only going to get more and more popular as a, as a training tool. So. All right. All right. Um, then I'll pass it to you because uh, I have the following slides for you. Yeah, absolutely. And thanks again, Evan, for for joining us. Um, really appreciated your your insights and and everything, all the help from the from the Stride team. So at this time, we we've got a couple of uh, special uh, athlete guests. Um, we've got Emma Bates, the 2018 uh, U.S. National Marathon champion and Parker Stinson, who is the US 25K record holder uh, on, on the road. So we'll bring Emma and Parker in, and we've just got a couple of questions for them. I see Parker, I see Emma. Hey guys, how are you doing? Good, how I'm are you doing? Guys? Good, thanks. Uh, well. I know I gave you a little brief introduction, but uh, I'm going to let each of you uh, kind of introduce yourselves to to all of our users, and, and we'll let Emma go first. Uh, ladies first here. All right, I'm Emma Bates. Uh, I'm an athlete for ASICS America and Coros Global. Uh, I am a marathon specialist, so my marathon PR is 225.27. I ran that at the Bank of America Chicago Marathon, where I took fourth place overall, um, and so. I, I train a lot. I run a lot of miles. And so I need a watch that is going to be reliable and especially a watch that is going to have long battery life. So I run 110 to 120 miles a week. Um, so I definitely need a watch that is going to last that long, especially I have consistent lack of oxygen to the brain. So I definitely forget to uh, charge my watch a lot. Um, so I definitely want um, a, a watch that is going to last like the entire week, honestly. Um, and Coros has gone above and beyond with their battery life with every single watch that I've used. So that has been essential. And then another thing that I look for in a watch um, is going to be the weight. Running 110 and 120 miles a week, your arms get really, really tired. And so I'm going to need a watch that is not going to, you know, be bothering me the entire time. I don't even want to know it's there. Um, especially with the band running in Boise, Idaho, that's where I train. It gets to, you know, triple digits during the summertime and a lot of chaffage happens, you know, especially with the silicone bands. And so I, I definitely want a band that's not going to, you know, rub the entire time. Um, so the, the weight and then the, the weight of the actual watch and then the weight and the material of the band is, is very important to me. Um, and then ease of use, uh, every workout I do is either on the track or on the roads. 
And when I do a track workout, I definitely don't want to be fumbling around. I'm running, you know, five minute per mile pace on the track. And so I, I don't have time to be, you know, looking at the watch and fumbling around with it. So I just want one button to, to press start and stop. Um, and a stopwatch feature is also something that is really, really important to me, um, just so that I can either get every lap down or every couple laps down um, and just be able to look at it with ease. And also with the, um, when I'm doing longer workouts on the pavement, I do around 10 miles at a time, um, 10 to 18 miles, you know, tempo runs. And I need a watch that's gonna be really accurate when it comes to GPS. Um, so I really want to just, you know, have it buzz every single mile and be able to look down and know that that is the time that I ran and that's the time I need to run. Um, also, tracking recovery is really, really important to me. So just, you know, being a marathon runner, recovery is about 95% of the battle. So I want to be able to track that as much as I can. Um, and so being able to track my sleep um, and then also knowing how many hours of sleep I get and the deep sleep or the lighter sleep that I get. So kind of trying to adjust maybe the training if I'm not getting as much deep sleep. Um, so that is something that I really look look for when I, when I use a watch and then the um, knowing how much I need to recover afterwards. So if the watch tells me, you know, a certain amount of recovery this day um, and another day, I can kind of record that and compare and contrast and see if, you know, I may not be recovering as much as I like. Um, so overall, just the efficiency. Um, I, I, again, like the one, one button for the start and stop and then just the ease of use. That is the main thing that I look for in a watch. Awesome. Thanks so much, Emma. And uh, I know we're gonna we're gonna bring you back a little bit later, and, and we'll talk a little bit more. Um, and yeah, Parker, um, you know we'll uh, we'll sling it over to you now uh, in in Boulder. And uh, yeah, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you know what you're looking for in a watch. Sure. Hey guys, my name is Parker Stinson. Um, I went to the University of Oregon, where I was a nine-time All-American. Um, I was a Pan Am, Pan Am Junior Champion. Um, well, I want to check. Can you guys hear me okay? Okay, because it's not changing screens. Got you. Um, yeah, I'm a I'm a road warrior, uh, kind of like Emma. I, I go to the U.S. circuit and do all the different road distances, travel all over the country, and trying to become a marathon specialist as well. I ran 210 at the Bank of America Chicago Marathon, where Emma got fourth. Um, I think I finished 10th or 11th, maybe. Um, and then also last year, I set the U.S. Uh, American record for 25K on the roads. And, you know, I've been running since I was a little kid. Um, and I've been using GPS watches since I was a little kid, too. Um, since I was like 11 or 12, I was an age group runner. I've always loved running. Um, always loved getting that feedback from a GPS watch. Just when you're out there killing yourself on the trails or out there working really hard, I've always loved getting that accurate data and knowing how fast did I close that last mile for that run or how fast that I crushed that long run. So something that's really important to me, you know, um, is just accurate data, high functioning data, um, and not just a GPS. Um, heart rate data matters a lot to me. The power data matters a lot to me, especially um, here in Boulder, Colorado, we'll get these unbelievably like windy um, days, hot days, we're at altitude. And, you know, you can be really fit and go out there and the GPS isn't going to be very kind to you. You're not going to you're not going to run very fast times, and you're not going to be happy with your workout from that standpoint. So, I think it's just super super important to have the power metric, to have the heart rate metric, and have those be as accurate as possible. So you know, hey, what kind of workout did I get today? And be a little bit kinder on yourself than the GPS can be sometimes, because it can be brutal out here uh, in Boulder, Colorado. Um, another thing, just like Emma said. I want to have a watch that like, I think, man, back in the day when I was like 11 or 12, I had a, I had a watch that was about this big. It was like, uh, almost like, man, you felt like a superhero wearing it, but uh, your arm was getting all messed up. You weren't running quite, quite right. So I want to watch that you don't even know is there. Like it's not even a part, like it's just a part of your body and you're knocking out your workout. So being lightweight without sacrificing some of the high functioning capabilities is super important to me. Um, and then the other thing Emma touched on is you guys just have comical, comical battery life. Um, and I know there is nothing worse because this has happened to me many times in years past 
there's nothing nothing worse than going out for your 24 mile long run, your big marathon specific workout, whatever it is, and you've got your bottles and you've set up your bottles, you've gotten your drinks set up and all this kind of stuff. Um, you you just don't like you don't want to be thinking about hey did I charge my watch or not? And I can't tell you how many times um, it's it's been at you know five percent or eight percent and I have to wait around you know and charge my watch and hope that I can have a good workout later in the day. So those are all the things that I look for in a GPS watch um, that just help me do my job a lot better and and not worry about not worry about it. So. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Parker. Thanks so much, Emma. And like I said, we'll, we'll see you guys again in, in just a short while. Um, but yeah, so just, just to summarize, you know, some of the things that, that Parker and Emma were looking for uh, in a watch, they're, they're looking for something. Um, we'll go to the, the next slide here. Um, they're looking for something that is lighter. They're looking for something with long battery life. They're looking for something that has the maximum amount of training features, and it's easy to use and has accurate data. So let's see if we're able to give them what they're looking for. Welcome back, everybody. Um, I'm so excited to talk about a second topic of today. It's our Carl's Pace 2 Premium GPS Sport Watch. So just from this 15 seconds uh, quick teaser of the video, you kind of get a good idea of what it is. I'm going to walk through why this is going to be amazing. So first thing first, how it looks. Um, good looking watch is probably always the number one thing in our team, like a watch that that's the most important thing, make it a nice design, make it, you know, you want to wear something out. So we are present you presenting to you the two color options and then versus, uh, uh, along with the two band options. So essentially in the pace two range, you're going to have four options. Um, it's so dark Navy with nylon bands, white with nylon bands or dark navy with silicon band and or white with silicon band. Um, let me get to the detail of this watch. So the most important thing, number one, light. So we cover about lightweight. We are so excited to bring you this Pacer watch, calling it the lightest GPS watch on the planet uh, with the Coros nylon band. It's only 29 grand. Um, you know, on this slide for a quick comparison, um, Actually, the Garmin 4 Runner 45S, it's a smaller watch than Pace 2, and it's still three grams heavier than us, and not mentioning the other watches. So our team has been trying really, really hard at how to make a lighter watch, but yet still durable. One thing is we shave off the weight from the band as well, from the nylon band. Like the first generation of nylon bands towards the mass production of the nylon bands, we actually were able to shave our one gram off it, off it. That's why also you've seen, it takes longer. It took longer for us to, to make this 42 millimeter nylon bands. And to get to the more of a detail of this watch, um, it's a smaller watch. So Pace 2 is only going to be a 42 millimeter watch body, while the first generation of Pace is 46 millimeter watch. That's one of the reasons we're able to make it lighter However, it's the same size of the screen. You are not sacrificing anything by having a smaller watch. You still have the full set of the visibility and you still have the full set of the data, including the resolution of the screen as well. So that's one of the good things. And then for the product itself, we, we talk, we've been talking about a pace one reaching its limit of the storage for, for over a couple of months right now. We're able to building four times bigger storage. 
five times bigger memory as well as a 1.5x stronger processor into PACE2. That means PACE2 is going to last long. I mean, taking more features, we'll be able to take more features, feature updates in the future into this watch just because it, it's the capacity of this watch is just bigger. So feel free to get PACE2 on your wrist and then you're going to just like the other more premium models, you're going to receive the new firmware update, new features every once in a while for free, apparently. And then battery life is always one of the topics, even though it has a smaller battery, because it's smaller, it has smaller watch space, we were able to extend the full GPS battery with even longer. So it's five hours more in the full GPS mode, and it's 10 hours more in ultra max battery mode. And you just can't say anything. Nothing is better than having a smaller watch, having a lighter watch, but a longer battery life. And there are a couple of things like people like in our other watches, then we are now bringing it into Pace2. Number one is a digital dial. Now you are able to use the Pace2 with only one finger control, just like it's shown on the picture of scrolling the data that you have, and then stop, start the button, and stop the, the workout. And now Pace2 is also equipped with a strength training mode. It wasn't able, we were able to build it into the original Pace. And now you have this, then you can train uh, in the full feature set. Also the night mode is something people have been asking because night mode is actually not, a, again, it's not a software update, it's a hardware thing. Uh, like the original Pace doesn't support night mode only because the LED light, the screen that we have um, is only able to handle one level of brightness. And then in the Apex Pro and the Vertex, we're able to bring in a, putting additional hardware so it light up in a much dimmer level and allows you to hold on the battery for the whole, throughout the whole night. And we're so excited to be able to bring this night mode to Pace 2, then you can train either at night or you can train um, in a dark indoor environment. And meanwhile, for, for you, you probably have seen, we have the nylon band option, you know, as well as a new silicon band option. Those bands also works with Carl's Apex 42 millimeter. It's compatible. So here's a quick comparison chart. I'll pass it to Dan just to summarize uh, the hardware that we're gonna launch today. Yeah, thanks, Lewis. So yeah, let's let's just take a quick look at what changed from the from the pace to the pace two. So smaller watch, 42 millimeters versus 46, but we kept the screen size the same. The, the computer processing power, it's one and a half times more powerful. It's got five times more memory and four times more storage than the original Pace. It's also lighter by about 40% with the nylon band. Uh, 29 grams makes it the lightest watch on the market. GPS battery life increased by 20% in, in full GPS battery life and Ultramax mode. Not everything comes easy. So we did lose a little bit of standby battery, but that's because frankly, we had to use a smaller battery for a smaller, lighter watch and regular standby battery uh, tends to be correlated to the, uh, to the watch size while the GPS battery life, uh, we were able to work to, to make it as efficient as possible and, and really grow that for you guys. Um, how do you use it? Well, we went from being uh, kind of the old school four button approach to now having the digital dial uh, along with the back button. We offer you the night mode. We have quick release bands that will also be compatible uh, with the Apex 42 millimeter. We've kept the water resistance rating the same at five, uh, five atmospheres. So that's the equivalent of uh, 50 meters. And then also the charger. Uh, we've updated it to use the same charger as the rest of the lineup. So now the plug-in versus the clip charger. And now let's, uh, let's bring back Parker and Emma. Um, They've been using the Pace 2 over the last few weeks, and we just want to get a, a little bit of real-world feedback on, on what they think of the watch. So welcome back, guys. Um, Emma, we'll start with you again. Um, tell us a little bit about what it's been like, you know, running in, in Boise and getting your training in uh, using the Pace 2. 
Yeah, again, like I said, in Boise, uh, it reaches, you know, triple digits on average. And so um, having this watch with the nylon band is a complete game changer. Um, I noticed a lot of rubbing with the silicon band. And so um, that has been something that has been really, really helpful, um, just so I don't notice that it's there at all. Um, running with this watch, it's again, incredibly light. Uh, so I don't get fatigued as often. I can actually move my left arm. I definitely had a problem with that in the past and not moving my left arm. And I think because, you know, the watches have been so big in the past. And so having this uh, be so light as it is, uh, is something that has been very, very special. And then also just the, the huge watch face has been really, really nice just to be able to look at my watch and it lights up every time and it's super crisp and easy to see. Um, and that has been really, really helpful for, you know, each each workout that I've done. Um, and there's some different features um, that I've noticed in this watch, like there's a, this is a stopwatch feature that I've used on the track. Um, and so that I can get every lap uh, very accurately. Um, and so, yeah, I just, I really, really like this watch because again, it is so efficient and that's something that I look for. I don't want to have to think, I don't want to have to fumble. And uh, this has been um, my favorite watch of all time. And so I think you guys really, really hit all of the boxes. Um, and especially with the recovery, you know, you guys had an amazing system in the app. And so it, it's even better now. You can, you can go on the watch face and you know, kind of, um, you can you can definitely track your your recovery a lot easier than um, I had normally. So um, everything everything is in this watch. It also has on the face, you know, the the elevation and the heart rate and everything that you need, everything that you want um, when you're when you're trying to run fast and improve as much as you can. So um, thank you guys again for such an amazing watch. So this this guy is not. I'm, I don't take it off ever unless I unless I. Um, I charge it, which is very, very infrequent, um, but it's such a stylish watch too. So I can wear it anywhere. And um, everybody's asking me, you know, on the street, like, where'd you get that watch? A lot of people are, you know, catching on to the Coros trends. So I'm excited uh, to be an athlete for you guys and, and to be trying this out and helping it get better and better. And I'm super excited for, for, you know, everybody else to try it as well. Thanks, Emma. We'll have uh, we'll have some more places for them to uh, to shop for Coros and Boise really really soon. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's funny you you don't you don't think about like how much is a gram. Like it, we just we don't really think about that even even in shoes. Like what's an ounce? What's half an ounce? But you know, when you multiply every stride that you take over you know a ten mile run or a twenty mile long run, uh, those grams start to add up, and and that weight makes a makes a big difference. So really appreciate that feedback. Thanks so much, Emma. So, Parker, let's uh, let's bring you back, and um, yeah, love to hear about your training uh, recently with uh, with the pace too. Yeah, I think the the Coros team really hit this watch out of the park. Um, it's kind of unbelievable. You know, you this watch is so light, like you could toss it up and catch it in your catch it in your hands, and you wouldn't even feel anything landing in your hands. It's just crazy. Um, I think you know. Another thing that's been great for me is like, I don't think I've charged this watch one time since I've gotten it so far and I've had it for probably two weeks, week and a half. And I haven't been doing as much training as Emma, but I've just been kind of getting back into shape and you guys kind of sent me this watch right as I was getting back into shape. And so it's kind of been nice to, to start, start over with a new buddy um, and my new training partner, my watch. Um, it's been really great. And uh <laughs> I don't, I don't appreciate how uh, accurate the heart rate monitor has been. Honestly, I've uh, been going on these, these little, these little runs and it's just like mind blowing how um, high my heart rate is, but I know it's accurate because you guys only do the best over at Coros. And so it's just something I, it's a, it's a starting point for me. Um, yeah, just, I agree with a lot of the things Emma said, you know, just the, the, the nylon band um, is just awesome. Uh, the, the heart rate I always appreciate. And just like, you can just scroll. Something I've always loved about um, the Coros watch too is scrolling through your your workout. The, I don't even know what you would call it, but the, the stamina section, where it's kind of showing how much stamina you have left, this and that. Um, I love that part. And I love that part of training. Just kind of like another, I'm just a, a, a running nerd, a running geek. So I appreciate all the different um, metrics 
with stride and wrist power, I cannot wait to start, um, to start adding that to my, to my training routine. But yeah, no, it's been really great. It's been really hot here in Boulder too. And, um, just having this lightweight watch and I get a ton of compliments on the pace too. I get a ton of compliments on my, uh, apex pro as well. Uh, when I go out and about, so, um, you guys really went above and beyond and I couldn't be happier. Um, yeah, I haven't done, I haven't ripped any 20 milers with this watch yet. Like Emma probably has, but, um, for what I'm doing, it's been really great and, uh, really stoked to have this, the best watch in the business right now. Yeah. You know, Parker, it's, it's good to hear that you're human. Um, and that, you know, as you're, as you're coming back and getting back into shape, you know, your heart rate is, is high like the rest of us when we're, we're not quite as fit as we'd, we'd love to be. But uh, yeah, I know you're you're getting back into the swing of things, and I'm um, I'm glad that a new watch can at least be be part of the the motivation for you there. Oh, absolutely. Well, thanks so much, Parker. Uh, we really appreciate you being on, and Emma, thanks so much as well. Um, you guys were great, and uh, I'm glad you were able to join us for for today's launch. Thanks for having us. You yeah, bet. thank you so much, guys. All right. Take care. So... We're we'll sending it back to Lewis now. Yeah, Parker actually hit a great, great point. Uh, why we make this watch so light? Uh, in addition to how light it is, so it's less drag you down in the training, the high rate accuracy along with the nylon band is one of the cool, the best things ever with pace two. I used to train with a uh, heart rate chest strap, uh, especially for my intervals, because I know that's when I care the, the data the most. And then ever since I start using pace two, I just throw that uh, that, pay, uh, that strap away because uh, I can totally trust the interval uh, heart rate strap, uh, interval heart rate data from this pace two. So I can't wait to put this on everybody's wrist and uh, let me know how they, how do you feel. But this nylon band because it fits your wrist uh, a lot tighter than the silicone, and uh, it, it's fully adjustable to the how big your wrist is. And so it stays very closely on your wrist and it's lighter. So it's less noise for the sensor. We'll be able to make it more sensitive and catch up our heart rate data a lot better than any other watches. So yeah, it's getting close to the end of this slide. So one of the most important thing that we'd like to present is we're able to keep the price exactly the same as the first generation of Pace. So it's $200 at 19999 in US dollar and same in Euro. And then in British pounds is $179.99. Uh, you know, we'll be, we're still we're very, very happy to make it possible for all the users and to make it possible for you to put it on a wrist. And then honestly, if you already have an Apex Pro or Vertex, you know, I don't mind you get another pay suit just for your daily training. That's what I'm, what I'm doing. Or maybe I have too many watches. Um, but I train with Pace 2 normally, and I'm going out for my mountain adventure in the weekends with my Apex Pro. Um, yeah. Yeah, Lewis, thanks thanks so much for being, you know, as the CEO, you you kind of have the final word on on pricing, and we really appreciate you keeping the uh, the price where it is and and still packing in all these these new features. And and frankly, you know, the possibilities for for even more new features down the road still at this this two hundred dollar two hundred euro price point. Um, so for those of you in the chat looking to figure out where you can get this watch, you can pre-order it now on uh, Coros.com and in uh, several other uh, retailers and, and countries around the world. And we'll start shipping on or before September 4th. So that's, that's next Friday. So uh, the watch will be here and, and on your wrist but before you know it. And with that, um, you know, we'll, we'll take a look at uh, a few final questions if there are any uh, from the chat. And um, you know, we're running a little bit over here on time. We tried to stick to an hour, but there's just so much to pack in. It's, it's tough to, to stay on time, but we, we appreciate those of you who have been with us, uh, from the very beginning and, and we'll stick around, uh, and try to answer some questions in, in the chat as well. So, uh, thank you everyone for, for being with us and, and we hope to continue having you as, as part of the growing Koros family.